Hey, I want to take a couple of minutes to speak about something that I think is extremely necessary, uh, very valuable, and very difficult. It's actually something that I am so bad at. And this is talking about open communication, about talking about things that are difficult, that are hard. That And the reason why these things are so hard is because they touch at the core being of, of who we are, of our insecurities, of... Um, past traumas that we've undergone. And where do we see this in this week's Parsha? In this week's Parsha, when we finally see Yosef, um, after all this time of not exposing himself, not letting his brothers know who he was, and he finally has the big reveal, he tells them that he is Yosef. Ani Yosef, I am Yosef, is my father still alive? And he hit the brother with this whammy. And they're totally shocked. They're totally taken aback. And he keeps talking because he sees he sees that they couldn't talk, it says, in the parsha, in the shot. It says they couldn't talk because they were in such shock uh, from his face. And so he keeps talking. Uh, a lot of times what, what people do when, when, you're, when you say something and people like, you just keep talking to, to ease the situation. And he says... He says to them what seems and what is lauded by many interpreters as a good thing. He says, don't worry, don't be upset. Don't be upset that you sold me down here to Egypt because it was God's plan all along. Don't worry, I'm, God put me here. There's going to be seven years of famine and he put me here to provide for the family and this is all in God's hands. So now hurry up, go get daddy, bring your families, come down to Egypt. I'll provide for you and blah, blah, blah. Now, this, you know, on the outset seems very magnanimous. What they did to Yosef, what he suffered, what he endured. And he's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, it's all right. It's okay. This was God's plan. And we know that Yosef was a great man. And no doubt that he really thought, of course, indeed, this, this was part of God's plan. To be able to provide, maybe, for the family. But nevertheless, as we all know, there is culpability. When people do things, when people do things that are wrong, when people make other people suffer, when people do things what the brothers did, to just imagine they stripped him of his coat, they threw him in a pit, he's screaming. It's a horrible thing. They almost killed him. They, will, they planned on killing him. This is not, nothing small. These are decisions they made. This is something they needed to talk out. Yosef should have talked out with their brothers, not even for Yosef's sake of, of getting closure, but for the brothers' sake as well. It's not good enough for you to be generous and say, don't worry, don't worry, I forgive you for whatever you did. It has to be worked out for you, for the other person. And the reason why I say that I see this when it comes to Yosef is because... First of all, they're shocked, they're silenced, they can't, it's so much information the way he just throws it on them all at once, okay, fine. But then in the end, when Yaakov, at the end of the, um, the next Parsha, when Yaakov passes away, and it says the brothers see that their father passed away, and they were worried that Yosef was going to um, hold all, everything that happened against them, and they concoct a whole story that didn't happen to say that Yaakov said, um, you know, things he didn't say. So the reason why is because they, they, they still thought maybe Yosef held against them. Why? Because they didn't hash it out. They didn't have that conversation. They didn't talk about it. And you know what? I'm, it's not easy. It's painful. It's difficult. It's hard. I don't know how many people can, but we have to understand that it's the right thing to do. And if we can muster up the strength when we're in a difficult situation, when we have our, our brothers and our sisters... Uh, you know, literally or not literally, people that we're dealing with, that we're close with, and they hurt us, and they hurt us deeply, and we just want to forget it, because we want to forget it, we want to move on, and we want to be above things sometimes, and and we say, okay, everything's for the best anyway. Yes, everything's for the best anyway, but that doesn't change things, and that doesn't change culpability, and that doesn't change the fact that you can make your relationships stronger and build trust and work it out and talk about it and come to a resolution and cry it out on each other's sleeves and say, I, I'm so 
oh, sorry, I hurt you. My brother, I wish I could take it back or whatever. Or explain why they felt that way. How painful it was for them when they saw Yaakov give him the, the kotonet pasim, the striped tunic. Just talk it out. Talk it out and explain your emotions. And then maybe at the end of the life, they wouldn't have been suspicious. They would have been stronger. They could have lived maybe all those years out closer after having had a heart-to-heart and laying out all their stuff on the table and working it through, working through it. But when we say, no, no, it's okay, don't worry, it's all right. Um, It might seem like we're being generous. It might seem like we're trying not to, you know, hold a grudge, which we're not. It's against the Torah to hold a grudge. It's against the Torah to to, um, take revenge. And so we don't have to do that. But that doesn't mean that you don't have open communication. You don't hash it out. You don't work it out. You don't share. Because if you don't, they'll never be able to have a full repair and a better relationship and trust for the future. And if we don't have that, then it's just um, a surface. It's not deep. It's not meaningful. It's not enduring. And um, it leads to later frictions that will happen inevitably. So that's my message for today. Wish you a Shabbat Shalom.